Good morning, church, and happy fifth Sunday of Easter from Union Avenue. Today we are streaming our worship service on Facebook, so please share, like, or comment during our time together. However you got here, we are joined together in the spirit of the living God to give praise, to receive a good word, and to celebrate the love of the risen Christ at his table. We'll be sharing in Holy Communion this morning, so take a moment to gather some communion elements together that you may have in your homes if you like. They don't have to be bread and wine, but simply those things that help discern our common life in God and remember how we are all connected as Christians around the Lord's table, be it in physical space or in cyberspace. And if you prefer to watch and meditate, that's fine too. Know that you are a beloved child of God and always have a place at Christ's table among friends. And so here in this Easter season, let us now draw together in spirit and center ourselves in the presence of God's love as we worship together this day. Hear these words from the 147th Psalm. Praise the Lord! How good it is to sing praises to our God. For the Lord is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. God lifts up the downtrodden and casts wickedness to the ground. Great is our God, whose understanding is beyond measure. Praise the Lord. church. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. As we begin, let us take a moment to center ourselves. Take a deep breath in. Exhale slowly. Now take note of your surroundings, recognizing that we're living in an unusual time of uncertainty and disquiet. Set these thoughts aside and turn our attention inward as we prepare to pray with our Creator. God of Resurrection, as we remember and celebrate the good news of Easter, open our hearts and minds as we give thanks to you this day, that we might hear your call to be Easter people and take part in your bringing the world to life through love. Alleluia and, and Amen. amen.
Good morning, church, and welcome to today's Children's Moment, a time when all children of God are welcome to spend a few minutes to think about how much God loves us and how we might share that love this week with others. And I bet you all know that today is a pretty special day. Hooray, hooray, it's Mother's Day, and that certainly is a great day that we like to celebrate. But I bet today you're not celebrating it in your normal way. I bet today, because of the pandemic, we're celebrating it in a much different way than we normally do. I can tell you we're not in church with our families um, celebrating it. We're, we might not be going out for a nice meal at a restaurant. We're getting together with extended family to celebrate or going to some fun places. And that might make us a little sad or frustrated or maybe a little even angry. Um, Honestly, today might be a pretty challenging day for some people. It reminds me of a passage in the Bible in the first letter of Peter when he talks about how making the right decision is sometimes hard. And sometimes making the right decision um, even sometimes makes us suffer a little, um, makes us feel sad. Do you ever feel that way? Um, I do today because I can't be with everyone at church and I miss everyone so much. I think about how um, on Mother's Day I like going maybe to places like the zoo and we can't do that. And um, Peter reminds us, though, that it's really important um, to stand by and make really good decisions and how sometimes doing the right thing and doing what's right is hard. So in these difficult days, we're told to wear a mask if we have to be by people. And... um, that some of our favorite places are closed and things that we can't do. And um, those are decisions that are in the best interest to keep us healthy. And even more important, they're um, the decisions people make so we don't get other people sick. And those decisions are hard, but it's the right thing to do. It's kind of like what Peter says in his letter, that even though you might suffer when you do what's right, you're blessed. And we certainly are blessed because we have God with us every day, all the time. And God brings us hope. And especially during Eastertide, when we are celebrating the resurrection of Christ, um, we remember how hope wins. And hope is stronger than fear. Doing what's right isn't always easy. And sometimes it's not very popular to make those decisions. But Peter reminds us that God is standing right there with us when we make those decisions. And that we should share with others in a kind and gentle way that um, God's hope also brings us peace as we make those decisions. And I bet your mom or grandma or other people in your life have told you something similar, that um, do what's right, even when it's hard or inconvenient, or um, that you might meet up resistance from others for it. Um, I know my mom did, and... My kids probably heard it more often than they wanted to, um, but every day as they would leave for school when they were little, I'd say, love ya, make good choices. And it made me think, you know what? It's right there in the Bible. So as you go on this week, um, think about the people who have supported you in doing what's right and have reminded you Um, to do the right thing and make good decisions, even when it's tough. And thank them for being a blessing in your life. And I hope you go out this week and feel blessed and bring blessings to others 
as you make good choices. See everyone. Good morning, friends. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the the first Peter from the third chapter, verses 13 through 22. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Now who will harm you if you're eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what's right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that, when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all. The righteousness for the unrighteous, in order to bring you God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made, made subject, subject to, to him. him. These are the words of our tradition. tradition. God, God grant, grant us insight. insight. Good morning, church and greetings to you all on this fifth Sunday of Easter. I hope that you've had a good week and are safe and are well. During Eastertide, we've been exploring the epistle 1 Peter together, written to Christians living under the Roman Empire all across Asia Minor in the late first century. Because these Christians didn't worship the emperor, their patriotic pro-Roman neighbors began to socially ostracize them, leading to experiences of suffering and persecution, exile in their own homes. First Peter reframed the Easter message to them through pastoral words that gave comfort, counsel, and encouragement right when they needed it. The author enjoins the audience to set their hope in God, turning the world right side up, to be holy in their actions, and to bravely live the time of their exile. The author also teaches them how to serve God through nonviolent resistance, even honoring the emperor, whose worth is no less and no more than anyone else. The author directly addresses household servants and women, a scandal for the time, helping them find ways to survive violent masters and husbands, knowing when to take a stand and when to give the silent treatment. And husbands are directly reminded that their wives are also heirs of grace. While 1 Peter doesn't dismantle patriarchy itself or oppressive Roman household codes, it takes quite a stand for its day, and speaks to an audience whose daily living could not escape suffering. The author of 1 Peter couldn't imagine the current world devoid of suffering. One should try to avoid needless suffering, but if one must suffer, then one should at least do so for godly reasons than ungodly reasons. And then we come to our passage today, what is perhaps the most difficult of the entire epistle. After pronouncing a blessing upon those who suffer for what is doing right, much like the beatitude of Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount, naming as blessed those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, the text presents a rather formulaic phrase, for Christ also suffered for sins once and for all, so that he might bring you to God. 
So are we to endure suffering just because Christ's crucifixion gets us into heaven? A few verses later, the author writes how baptism now saves you. So only baptized believers who suffer as Christians get to go to heaven? Does this really sound like good news to you? Especially good news supposedly coming from a loving God? Me neither. Did we miss something somewhere? In fact, we did. In the middle of all this language about atonement and baptism, being saved and being brought to God, are these verses about Christ proclaiming to the spirits in prison and something about Noah's Ark. We usually brush right over it, thinking about the catechism of Jesus descending into hell between his crucifixion and the resurrection to go liberate those righteous souls who died before Jesus was born. And that part about Noah just reminds us of a wrathful, angry God who flooded the world. Better to move past these verses as quickly as possible and get to the stuff about baptism and being saved in heaven with Jesus. The only problem is that the text says Jesus proclaimed to the spirits in prison after his resurrection. Other texts may point to Jesus descending to hell on the second day, but not 1 Peter. Rather, the author alludes to an apocryphal Jewish story from 1 Enoch, wherein Enoch journeys to the prison of rebellious angels to proclaim their final destruction. These are the same angels from Genesis 6 whose rebellion against God necessitated the great flood, hence the reference to Noah and the ark, and later in our text, how angels and authorities and powers are subject to Christ. The author of 1 Peter says to the audience that just like Enoch, the risen Christ went to those rebellious spirits, angels, demons, princely powers, whatever name you want to use, and proclaimed the good news to them that God's love will ultimately triumph over evil and violence and suffering. God saves us from ourselves and makes a way through the waters of chaos so that life can flourish. Without a doubt, life is full of hardships and people suffer. But God does not visit suffering upon us or punish us for our sins. Our sins themselves end up punishing us more than enough. Hence the phrase, you reap what you sow. And sometimes the things which others sow rip us apart and visit upon us much suffering. Nonetheless, we must strive to endure and be agents of goodness and mercy, love and light and life abundant. This is how baptism continues to save us, not as removal of dirt from the body or washing away of sin, but a reminder of the promise we made to God to follow the loving, revolutionary way of Jesus that commands our moral conscience, our constant consciousness of God's presence in our lives and in the life of the very world, making all things new. We are baptized into Christ, the one whose witness to the life of the world to come was worth risking death at the hands of those who had the most to lose if their world came to an end. And his witness brings us to God by bringing the ways of God closer to our hearts and into our world. Isn't that what we pray for when we say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? This is God's love empathy and solidarity, compassion and justice, kindness and mercy. And such love brings us all closer to God, even and especially in the midst of this broken world. 
First Peter today reminds us that our gospel is not one of a God that demands suffering, but liberates a world from suffering its own sin. Not of a God who demands fealty by faith, but reveals an irresistible grace. Not of a God who punishes, but saves. And not of a Christ who only cares about believers, but the risen Christ who proclaims to all that would rebel against love's victory the utter foolishness of their fight against the one who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Love wins. And love will lead humanity out of its self-imposed exile and into the very kingdom of God where suffering is no more. Therefore, Easter people, let us take courage, summon strength for our time, and sow seeds of love for the life of the world to come. Be safe, be well. May grace and peace be yours in abundance. Alleluia and Amen. Good morning, Church. On behalf of the executive team of Union Avenue Christian Church, I wish you blessings, courage, and hope as we walk through the current reality of COVID-19, social distancing, Zoom Bible studies, and Facebook services. As president of the board of Union Avenue Christian Church, I want you to know that the executive team has been meeting almost weekly uh, ever since the St. Louis Health Commissioner's Order Number 1 back in the middle of March. We have worked through how to comply with that order, but more importantly, our focus has been our health, the health of each and every one of us and the health of Union Avenue. While much is uncertain, this much I know and I believe with my entire heart, we have found ourselves with an opportunity to reimagine what it is to be church, how we relate to each other, and how we care for each other. There is no better place to be than at Union Avenue Christian Church. Our beautiful building is home, but more importantly, we are home wherever and however we gather together. Our future is bright, and I know great things are in store for us even as we celebrate the things of our past. I want to thank you for the giving that has been received either through mail, through electronic check, or through the Givelify app. As we continue our good stewardship, may God bless the gifts we continue to receive. May we use these gifts wisely to share the promise of a world turned right side up. 
because that truly is the good news. Good morning, church, and happy Eastertide. Thank you for joining us in spirit here at our table and for letting us share with you at yours. If you have communion elements, we invite you to make sure they're ready at this time. You are welcome to break the bread and pour the cup with us, or simply to watch and meditate on the mystery of God with us. In the midst of a broken and dying world, God raised Jesus to new life and showed us the promise of a new day, a world made new with love, forged out of the invincible hope of Easter. For our paschal lamb, Christ, is risen. Therefore, let us keep the feast. We remember how when Jesus gathered with his disciples to celebrate the Passover and remember the promises of God, he took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Every time you eat it, remember me. In a like manner after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the covenant renewed, my love poured out for all of you. For the forgiveness of all sins, every time you drink this, remember me. We are one bread, one body, one cup of blessing, though we are many scattered throughout the earth. And so, wherever you are, whatever elements you have gathered, rest your hands lightly upon these elements as a sacrament, and rest your hearts in the presence of our gracious host as we ask God's blessing upon them. Gentle Redeemer, there is no lockdown on your blessing and no quarantine on your abundant grace. Send your spirit of life and love, of power and blessing upon every table where your children shelter in place, that this bread might be broken and gathered in love and that this cup poured out to give hope to all. Risen Christ, live in us that we might live in you. Breathe in us, that we might breathe in you. Make us your body through this sacrament today. Amen. And now we invite you to pray together with us the Lord's Prayer, using whatever words are familiar to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us break bread together. The bread of life broken for you. The bread of life broken for you. And the cup of love poured out for you. Will you pray with us once more? Holy One, you have blessed our many tables and our lives. May this bread give us courage to speak faith and act in love, not just in church sanctuaries, but homes and places throughout your precious world, wherever we work or serve or shelter in place. And may this cup renew our hope, even in the midst of pandemic. Wrap your hopeful presence around all whose bodies, spirits, hearts, and minds need healing, and let us become your compassion and safe refuge. 
Amen. Thank you for sharing with us in this feast of love, of hope, and of new life. Dear friends, as Christ burst forth from the tomb, may new life burst forth from us and show itself in acts of love and healing to a hurting world. And may that same Christ who lives forever and is the source of our new life keep our hearts rejoicing and grant us peace this day and always. For Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you.